In this video, I'm going to be showing how to integrate the Wordlight API using CocoaPods. CocoaPods can be installed by in your Mac by using sudo gem install CocoaPods. That will give you the pod uh, CLI command utility. Um, first thing to do is create a Wordlight project. You can do this very easily with a uh, that Wordlight uh, CLI. Let's create a new project. What I create, I can call it my project. Change into that directory. It's a typical work like project. Then you can add a native iOS API, W add API. Call it something like W native iOS. Select iOS for the environment. Then for sample app, we'll be uh, creating an adapter. So let's create an adapter. So we'll add adapter. We'll call it news. HTTP, select default, and that's the adapter. Next thing is let's build and deploy. And let's open the console when that's done. So we know everything is ready. So this will create a typical project with a native iOS app and one adapter that will be connecting our app. So it looks like it's ready. Next step is let's download a sample app, uh, very very uh, generic uh, native iOS app. You can clone the repo, download the zip file, download it. I'm downloading the zip file. Let's um, on, on zip that, that app. It's a very generic um, iPhone app. Let's move it to the desktop. We can rename it to my app. Then let's open terminal. Again, uh, we can move to, to that directory on the desktop. My app. Uh, we can open the app. We can see what it do, does. Uh, basically, add a out of the box, it's just it's a simple uh, native iOS app um, that doesn't doesn't integrate the Wordlight -like API yet. We need to add the Wordlight -like API and then enable the code to use it. So let's run the app. The app shows two news. This is just uh, fake data locally um, put in the, in the app. So let's close the Xcode project. Every time you do a uh, Cocoa Pod, you have to close um, the project or workspace. So the way Cocoa Pod works is you have to create a pod file. So let's create a pod file. Let's open this file. Sorry, not the file, it's pod file. And then um, we're going to use uh, the repository that I created to host the what, like, API Cocoa Pod. So let's copy these two lines, go over what they mean. First one is platform iOS, it means that this app will be for iOS. Uh, the version could be 6.0, 5.1.1, 7.0. Uh, to make it simple, I have it set, set, set to 7.0. The next line is uh, the, declaring your dependencies. So you have one uh, declaring that you want a pod. The name is Worklight. And if it's available in the public re registry, you would just ignore the rest. For, for this uh, scenario, I'll be connecting to Git. Um, I will be connecting to the Git repository to get the Worklight API download it and install in the for this project so let's save the file Sorry. save the file go back to terminal and you go back to terminal you can inspect that you have the content correct then run pod install
it's installing Wordlight, and then it says from now on use uh, Wordlight W started the workspace. So from now, then you don't you don't need to use your Wordlight um, Xcode project. You have to use the and the reason is because your work your uh, iOS project is intact, and then it added a second project. So you're dealing with two projects. One is your app for your app and uh, the Cocoa Pod utility left your project intact. The only thing that it did was add this pods uh, exe config file for your configuration, but other than that, it left it um, as it was. Then it added a second project, which is your, uh, your uh, dependencies, and it's installed, um, in this case, one pod file, which is Wordlight. You can see it has the header files for your Wordlight libraries, has your frameworks, and the uh, Wordlight library and your resources. So at this point, your your app can use Wordlight APIs. Uh, one thing that you have to do is add your Wordlight.plist file. That file is specific to your project that we just created. So let's go to my project, apps, double native, and select Wordlight.plist. Uh, copy, create groups, select target. So add that file. So this file tells your app uh, where is the Wordlight server located, the host or IP address, the port, the context route, and all the information. So it's specific to your project. Um, the Wordlight API is, is generic to Wordlight. So to change our this app, very simple app, just go to CS table view controller.m. At the top, change the variable Wordlight to instead of 0, 1. This will make the app, instead of using dummy data to connect to the Wordlight server, invoke the adapter um, news which you can change here and then invoke the procedure called get stories. This will connect to the back end, in this case the CNN RSS feed and get stories and put them in the in the app. So let's com command shift K to clean, command R to run the app. The app comes up, it's connected to the worldwide server, connected to the back end and it gets the stories from CNN. Good. That was very easy to add Wordlight API to iOS. Then, if you're using um, Cocoa Pods, you can add more pods as dependencies. For example, um, let's close this and add another dependency. You can use the website to search for all the dependencies. Um, there, you can use like Magica Record, which is a popular one, or you can use the command line to find another one. So for example, if I want to add, I want to use the search command, I can do pod search, and search for IBM, see what's out there. So it looks like Bluemix has, IBM Bluemix has some Cocoa Pods available. So let's see if we can add some of those in. Let's open our pod file. And in this case, I want to add pod IBM Bluemix, I want to use uh, mobile data, cloud data, IBM data. Save it, go back to the terminal, make sure that the content is updated, and then run pod install. Make sure your workspace is closed. It will analyze the dependency. You will see that I'm missing IBM Bluemix, IBM data. It It will install it, and now we can open this folder, open the workspace in Xcode. And if you go to the pods project, you will see now that I have more pods, IBM Bluemix, IBM Data, with their respective header files and frameworks. So at this point, I can add Bloom functionality to my Wordlight app. So very easy to add a Cocoa Pod to a Wordlight app. Another way you can install the Cocoa Pod for Wordlight API into your app is using Path instead of a Git repository. So when you create a when you create a Wordlight project, we we export the Wordlight API into your apps folder. So let's see how we do that. So let's start by uh, with a new app, the app we just downloaded. 
we can unzip it our sample app copy it to the desktop and let's name it this one my app to say new app and we want to add the pod file let's go to the terminal let's move to that directory let's touch this directory File. Let's open this file. So in this case, we want to use a path. So we can use the information that is available here. And the trick is, instead of using a Git repository, we'll be using path. And where we created the path, the path is to the location of our um, project. So we created the project here, but we need the path to our apps folder. That will be native. And we want to have the path where this for API folder is located. So we want, we want this, this path, and we put it here. And what this would tell the Cocoa pot utility is go into this folder and look for what like dot pot spec, a pot spec file. So we need that file to be created. Let's go back our on this directory and let's touch this folder. Touch a file called work what like dot pot spec. We can open this file and it's empty. So we can go to the website and open a word like dot pod spec that we use from git and just use the content basically it gives the instruction on how to add this word like api to your app let's go back to our text editor let's copy the information here and then it will be complete so if we go back to the terminal and we go back to our app so in this case we check that we have our pod file in our app too is pointing to a path and this is the typical scenario when you are uh, developing for uh, contributing a pod file so you instead of consuming a pod file you're creating a pod file so for debugging and implementing a pod file you'll be using path so you can test locally in, the, in a directory so in this case let's run pod install this will not connect to the network. We just use the files from that directory where we already have the Worldly API. Then we can open the workspace. So you don't need to open the project anymore. You have to open the workspace from now on. So let's open the workspace. And as you can see, instead of saying pods, it says development pods. And you can see the information for our API. We can go to our app. And then as we showed previously, we have to add the Fortnite previous file, which contains the specifics to your Fortnite projects or apps. Go to the native, Fortnite.pilis, copy, create, target, start it. Double check that your Fortnite host name is correct, your port is correct. And the other information is correct depending on your project this information will be different and how you created the api then we can go to our sample project and just change one liner saying word like zero to word like one so in this case we, instead of using dummy data we want to connect to the word like server called adapter news which we define here and go invoke the procedure get started so if we run the app you can see it's connected to the Wordpress server. So two ways of adding a Cocoa Pod to your app. Very easy, very fast. Thank you.